Hey, what's up everybody? So today we're gonna to be breaking down a contemporary hip hop cue uh, called Clap Back. So y'all know how we do it. We'll take a listen to it, then we'll talk about it on the flip. All right, here we go. Okay, so there it is, clap back. Um, as I said, contemporary uh, hip hop uh, cue. So um, some of the basics, uh, the key is A minor. Um, it's 140 beats per minute, which is in that drill um, cue tempo. And of course you kind of hear that drill bass. Um, and it's a pretty small cue. Um, it's only about 20 tracks, um, you know, in the cue kind of look here just not a whole bunch uh going on but um you know it it definitely works so um one thing that i i, I want to recommend kind of before I, I i dig any deeper um into the cue is if you're writing like this this type of cue contemporary hip-hop you know pop what have you um cues in that ilk i would recommend maybe going to like youtube or spotify or even in this regard, I, I went to the Billboard R&B Hip Hop uh, charts as well and just kind of check out what's hot or what's trending and then try and craft a cue that has that same kind of vibe. So then your cue definitely sounds uh, contemporary and doesn't sound dated. Um, so it's just something, you know, that I, I would recommend as a way that you can try to, to make sure that your cue, um, you know, it's sounding pretty um, up to date. So, all right, so let's get into it. Um, I'll start with um, the drums. Um, so let's let's play a little bit of those. So as you see, um, nothing real, um, you know, deep about the drums or whatever, um, just to kind of break it down. So um, with my kick drum, as always, um, you know, guys, I'll show you that I do, um, of course, have the CLA 2A uh, compressor. Um, now, one thing, typically I'm only getting, sometimes not even move the dial uh, with my gain reduction or maybe getting a dB. I'm somewhere between two and three dBs of gain reduction uh, with this particular track. Um, but it's just kind of what I, where I needed it. Um, for the for the kick to you know kind of pop where I wanted it plus um, I do have the kick side chained um, as well and I'll break that down a little later um, when I show you my bass but um, here's our kick and then you see the gain reduction so you see we got a little more gain reduction popping uh, there like I said about 3 dBs of, of gain reduction there with CLA2A but it sounds amazing oh and let's do this so you can just see the difference so let's bypass it 
So you see, in. So you can definitely see the difference that the uh, CLA 2A makes. And then of course, um, you know, I got a high pass at 60, which is typically what have my kick. Sometimes I might even high pass it a little higher. Um, and then I got it low passed as well at about 11,000 um, or so, a little over 11,000 Hertz um, as well. So, um, and then with my snare, I also, as you know, I do the same thing in terms of um, using the uh, CLA-2A just to help it cut through um, just um, a little more. And let's get this here. Right. OK. So just to have it cut through a little more and you see the gain reduction. Gain reduction. OK, so we're getting about um, 2 dB of gain reduction there um so next thing is um let's take a look so i have a couple of um different uh hi-hats um going on so i have this thing that i call the hi-hat loop and that's kind of pan um to the left and then i have another loop a percussion loop okay and that's just actually kind of coming in to help support um, the kind of the clap that's going on um, in the queue. And then so speaking of the clap, um, I, it's a very important part of the drum uh, sound uh, in terms of driving the drum, especially on the chorus. So you'll notice that I have seven claps on every beat um, to kind of start. So if we play it, well, let me just play it by itself. So we just got some two, three, four. And it just really kind of adds something uh, for it. I mean, it's called clap back. So, you know, be cool to <laughs> have some claps in it. But they're a pretty prominent part um, of the, the drum. So, again, kind of everything. To, oh, and then let me go back um, just so we don't forget is we got a riser and we got a feel kind of setting up the entire cue. But let's try that. So that is the um, the drum fill, and then if we add the riser effect, so that's all. Just a, a little um, simple setup to get us into the cue. So that's pretty much our drums, and and we'll kind of talk about the form, but um, that that's pretty much where we are with our drums. So <clears throat> next, let's take a look at our bass. All right, so bass, I am using Sublab, um, this dope, and I'm actually using, they have a drill sub pack, which is really, really cool. And I'm using their sulfuric um, bass from that pack, and I'll play a little of that. So that's the sound, really cool, kind of gritty. Um, you can see, uh, you know, some of the settings, um, you know, that we have here. Um, and like I said, just, you know, real gritty. We got the crush on it, uh, the wave shaper and some distortion. Um, and it's just, you know, cool sound and it's just doing what it does. Um, so I think, let's see. So that's it. Um, typically, anytime you want to do those leaps or jumps, just make sure that the note that you're jumping to is like your bottom note is is kind of also hitting with that note. That's what gives you that, um, you know, that nice, you know, bounce effect without the note cutting off. You just have to have those notes extending um, over each other so um, just if you didn't know how to get that particular sound that's the way you do that in your bass um, so um, and then so yeah let's so let me show you the um, again the the uh, side chaining for this right so um, I have of course my um, bass and kick side chain and the kick feeds uh, into the bass so I'll show you the, the kick first so what's happening 
on the um, kick, right? It's here, I have a send, right? So the kick, I'm sending, um, you know, my, my kick pre-fader. Um, so it doesn't matter what happens with in terms of the fade level, it's always going to get the same amount of kick sent over to the compressor. Um, so I have my kick sent pre-fader, you know, just at zero dB um, over to the uh, compressor here um, that I have set up and um, I'll pull this over so we don't have to switch screens. And, and this is how we, we pretty much set up our side chain. So we have the compressor uh, working. So if I play my kick and bass, uh, you see that we're getting about two dB of gain reduction in the bass every time the kick hits. So it's basically ducking the bass. So the kick just stands out um, a little more. And then you see my threshold here. I got it about, um, you know, minus five. So if we want a little more gain reduction, I can uh, lower my threshold here. So now you see we're at almost 6 dB. So now we're all, almost 6 dB gain reduction but let's get that back to where did i have it i don't remember now but somewhere around uh, i think it was around five yeah so all right about two and a half db of gain reduction so that is a good way um if you need to duck you know an element uh to help another element cut through of course um that is a good way to do it with your side chain and that was just basically the basic um cubase compressor that i'm using and you can use any compressor that will side chain i'm just using a, um, the the uh, cubase uh, compressor there um so and, and that's pretty much it and then the only other thing with the bass of course is oops i don't want to go there but i i um have my bass high pass at about 40 about 40 hertz um Excuse me, some people, you know, may do 30. Some people don't, you know, high pass or whatever. But I, I typically do mine somewhere between 30 and 40. Um, and that's pretty much it for the bass. All right, so the uh, other elements that we have would be our melodic uh, elements. Um, and I'm using Halion for two of them, and then I have a one shot. All right, so first, let's do the piano. So basically, we have, as I said, the um, Halion. It's a kalimba. I call it piano, <laughs> um, but it's actually a kalimba patch um, that I'm using in Halion. And then um, basically what I'm doing is, of course, you know, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know I love to use stereo delay. Um, to add some interest. So we got some stereo delay going on, quarter note on each side. You can kind of see, um, you know, where I have my wet dry mix um, on it. And then you can see where I have my feedback uh, set. And then also <clears throat> where I have my filter um, at as well. So, um, but yeah, love using stereo delay to create some interest. And then of course I have um, a little reverb on it and then I have it high passed um, pretty aggressively so I got a high pass at almost 600 uh, so let's see if, if we don't have it high pass get a difference So it just kind of, you know, sparkles a little more. We just get anything in the low end cut out uh, just so it just doesn't, you know, get in the way um, of our mix. And then, of course, the delay, I think, always adds a nice um, element to it. Uh, then we have what I would call our counter melody is another Halion, um, and it is called Chirp Runner. Um, of course, Halion is just Cubase synth and... Listen to that. All 
pretty simple. Um, and it's just kind of playing off of the, um, the melody um, that's happening there and you know really nothing pretty much on it besides some you know i have it high passed and low passed but um that's pretty much it and if we put those two together so that's that okay and then we have a horn one shot um, so let's play that for you. Okay. So that's that. And then so um, what we did, though, as you see here, we did repitch that. Um, so we got it, we moved it down five semitones. So if I put where it actually is, and that's all it is, it's just, you know, just a, a one shot, a one one shot. So I just pitched it down five semitones to where I needed it. And then we just played in, um, what we wanted there. And we added, of course, <clears throat> excuse me, a little, um, stereo delay we added some reverb and then what's really critical now the high passing of this is really critical so again let me play it so that's where i have it now take the eq off so here on that bottom end with the eq back in And then, of course, that beautiful <laughs> stereo delay that I love so very much. Um, and on the left, we got a one to one, um, um, you know, and then on the right, we got a quarter note. OK, so, you know, got a whole note over here, quarter note um, over here. Um, and, you know, it just works with a little reverb on it as well. All right. And then if we put all three of those together. Right. And if we add those, just those with our drums. So you see, I mean, that kind of works, you know, by itself. Um, so that's what we have there. And then so the only other element that we really have is we have some chops, some vocal chops, um, just to make things sound a little more um, interesting. So um, first we have this um, male uh, chop going on. Y'all say, wait a minute, that's a male chop? Yeah, it is actually a male chop um, because we're to actually pitch this here. So that's where it's pitch. And then of course where I'm playing it is here. Right? And then if you look and then I also add like some stutters to it. So I'm not just playing the chop all just you know hitting the key and playing the chop through. So listen to what I'm doing. So we don't even use the whole chop. Okay, so we have that. Um, and then we have another chop here. Um, and I just add some delay to it. Um, but I'll play it for you. Let me show. Well, I'll play it, then I'll show it to you. That's it. Will you hear that ping pong? And I'll show you how I have the ping pong um, delay set up. So whole note um, there and there are my settings there. Okay, and I'm just starting it on the left. Okay, and as you see, got it high pass um, pretty aggressively. So we take the high pass off. Uh -huh. 
and with the high pass on. Mm -hmm. So um, there you go. There and then we got a little um, reverb on it. And then what I'll show you is you see how I have this set. So I'm only using half of the um, the chop that I found. Um, so that what I'm using is, is just that. But the whole chop is. So that's the whole chop. And then what I do is I just, I just use the uh-huh. I didn't need the yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we got that, um, you know, as a chop and I, and I make it a little faster to chop it. The phrase is actually just a little slower. Um, and then the last thing I have is just a, you know, just a, yeah. <laughs> that's really it um, but if you kind of put so my vocal chops together you get and then so I mean that's it like for our chops and if you kind of hear them in the context of the cue So there you have it, nothing like, you know, it's not crazy, um, you know, it's not super in your face, but it just gives you a vibe. And, you know, outside of that, um, you know, I got some risers and, you know, uh, thing, things of that nature. Um, and I would just say, you know, um, you know, probably as a note, um, and, and you guys, most of you probably already know this, but you know, if you don't, just try to make sure that you're using transitional elements, like in all your um, transitions, some risers, some drops, something, um, you know, in those spaces. So we just wanna make sure we got tr good transitional um, elements, okay? So cool. All right, um, so that's really it in terms of um that now if we talk about um just very quickly the form um you know of this um as i said earlier we got a riser and a snare uh, to set us up right and get us into that first uh big chorus um, and then we have an edit point and gets us into the breakdown so we've already heard it so let's just try to um because we're talking about transitional elements and then of course edit points are very important as well all right so let's just come off, off of the end of um, this first chorus going into our breakdown so you heard that a very short I, and it was intentional that I, I wanted it at a point but I didn't want it to be super long so what I did is I just did a 2-4 bar at the edit um, just so I could get back into the queue but it still gives the editor enough room if they just want to grab you know cut it off right there there's a solid boom 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 and they can just grab it there if they want and that's it. But look at the transitional elements as well, kind of getting us into this. So I got a little riser um, that is getting us into that edit point as well. And it's right, you know, making sure that it's stopping, you know, right on the beat um, or whatever as well. And then we're into um, our breakdown. Um, and so basically, you know, it's just a matter of kind of pulling, you know, out elements. So when we get to our breakdown, I pull out the claps, I pull out the chops and I pull out the horns. And on the second half, um, they come back in and then I also drop the theme by an octave. So when we get to the breakdown, So that's it um, for the first half of it. Then when we get to the second half of it, um, we're bringing um, 
some of those elements uh, back in. So we bring our claps and um, our horns and our chops and stuff back in. Second half. But even in bringing um, those elements back in, you see the claps. I'm not doing seven claps. I'm doing five claps uh, because you still want to have some type of difference, um, you know, when you get to the actual, um, you know, the big theme again. So I only do five claps here. It just kind of lets people know, yeah, 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 that's right. We did have the clap. So we kind of reintroduce them, but we don't give them all of them. Right. Um, and we do that. And then basically what we're doing is we're going into a net, another edit point um, as we go into the bridge. So if we come out of this. So again, another edit point. If they just want to stop there, it's a nice clean edit point. And then I do a little pickup with the bass um, to get us into the bridge. And although I, you still hear the same hook um, with the kalimba, ba 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 I do a harmonic change and the feel changes just so it feels like a different section. So if we're in the bridge. <laughs> Again, transitional element now to get us back into now breakdown number two. But breakdown number two is totally different than breakdown number one. And it's just kind of like writing cues within cues is what you're trying to do. So now when we get to, excuse me, breakdown number two, what you'll notice is, of course, there's no bass. All right. Then you'll hear how the claps are in. Let me get me a little drink of coffee here, guys. I apologize, but my throat is dry. I know coffee, not water, right? But coffee, yeah. <laughs> I'll get me plenty of water later. Okay, so, excuse me. So you'll notice, um, again, that we pull the bass out. We got claps in, didn't take claps out. Um, but it's totally different. And then we introduce... A, um, a reverb clap, like a long reverb clap as well, just for some another element. So you hear that? It's low in the mix, but it's there. And it's just a, a, a clap with a whole ton of reverb on it, um, just as a um, another element. And it's, it's just a, a clap one shot. And let me see here. Um, um, oh yeah, it's actually a reverb clap one shot. So I didn't even have to put reverb on. It's just a sample that I have. Um, so I just dropped it in. It's already got his own reverb baked in. Um, so again, so now we have breakdown number two, just again, um, some different kind of interest until we get to our final theme. So we come out of, you know, that breakdown. It's still the theme, but broken down. And then what do we do? We get into our final theme with everything in. And then you just want to make sure you got a nice uh, button on it. The only difference when we get to the second half of this theme um, is I take my piano. Look at the layers. So I have my piano now layer one, two, three, four times. Um, I have that's the melodic uh, piano there. I'm sorry, it's the kalimba. So we just layer up, right, to continue to create uh, some interest uh, for us. The, of course, we have our transitional element. We've got a nice long riser 
um, into our button. It's the longest riser probably we've used uh, in the queue because we're, we're, we're going towards the end. And then we do a nice button. And then the only thing <clears throat> I would say, make sure um, that you guys do, if I open up, uh, let me see, open up some of these lanes here. Yeah, so the lanes that have delay, because I don't remember right now, of course, everything um, that we have delay on. Oh, I think we got delay on these synth elements, right? Yeah. So I just want to show you this. You see um, at the button here how I have automated um, for my delays to end right on the downbeat um, of the button. And so you got that nice clean, you, you, you know, a nice reverb tail is cool, but you don't want your delays um, going, uh, going on all into your button. So you simply just automate it, you know, just automate your, um, your delay to bypass um, when it hits at the button. So we, we're here and you look at my delay and it's in read right now just right at the button boom it just bypasses and that way you get that nice clean element a uh, clean uh ending of course you hear jumping back in but if i jump back to the beginning if i want to went right back to the beginning as you see i have all my delays automate it to be off you know in the beginning so you don't get all that you know noise if you just jump back into your track but really at the end very very important that you automate um, all of your delays off right as you hit that last note in your button and just have that nice reverb tail um so just um, just a real quick, uh, you know, breakdown uh, for you guys today. I hope that it was helpful. Probably in my next video, we'll get a little deeper into <clears throat> the mix side of things, my reverbs. Um, I do use some parallel compression um, as well in my track. So some things like that I'll show you maybe in some upcoming videos. But again, hope this was helpful. Um, as I always say, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Please like please subscribe it definitely does help the channel i mean at the end of the day i hope it helped you so until next time thanks so much for watching peace and god bless